And welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from Decatur, Illinois. Joining me is Chef, uh, Chef Sanders. And before I bring him in uh, to, tell, to tell his story, let me pre preface it by saying this. Time and time again, I see uh, news stories come across Facebook about some child getting their lemonade stand shut down because the parents fail to obtain a health permit uh, or, you know, a food permit. I've seen many individuals shut down by uh, the government for attempting to feed the homeless uh, simply because they didn't ask for permission first to go through the proper licensing procedure. Uh, the list of absurdities and violations of autonomy are endless. Uh, and I have been meaning to do, to do an episode on this subject for, for some time. Uh, so when Mr. Sanders' story or Chef Sanders' story uh, made its way to me, uh, I knew it was time. So uh, without further ado, Mr. Sanders, uh, Chef, Chef Sanders, uh, welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio. Uh, thank you so much for, for taking some time to talk with me. And, uh, you know, I'm really sorry about what uh, you went through and uh, what, you, what you are going through now. So um, before we get to, I guess, current events, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, what do you do? Uh, how long have you lived in Decatur, uh, et cetera? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for um, having me on your show and uh, also reaching out to me. But um, I, um, I'm a local chef here in the city of Decatur. I, um, I, I used to run a community center some years ago working with at-risk youth. And, um, and I decided to uh, start cooking um, and uh, working with, like, at-risk youth and everything and feed, feeding them. But um, that didn't uh, pan out or work out the way I wanted it to. So um, I, I continued to, you know, cook uh, basically out of my home. I started out and we were feeding the homeless um, at the time um, on a daily basis. You know, we get up early in the morning around four o'clock and cook a huge uh, breakfast and basically, you know, um, would go to the police department where they would be laying on the floor and we would feed them but uh i um went to school in 2010 and got my uh my my permit which was my um sanitation license i once i got them i thought it was okay you know to cook with no problem um so i continued to do it every morning you know we would get up early in the morning and go we get up four o'clock in the morning i would uh, wake my sons up and we would cook a huge breakfast and we would take it down there to the uh, police department. And, um, you know, they allowed them to lay on the floor during the winter months, about 12, 13 of them. And, 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 and we were feeding them every morning. You know, I was shut down for that. You know, I got a fine for that. You know, they wanted to fine me a thousand dollars, but I ended up getting a hundred dollar fine plus court costs. Wow, that's uh, you know, that's 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 quite a story. And so obviously this isn't uh, uh, this isn't new, and you've you've done other things, uh, you know, trying to help the community and uh, um, and the youth here in Decatur. So you so you said you you're feeding about uh, you know twelve or thirteen people in the police station. You never uh, you know had people over here and fed them out of your house. You just cooked the food here and took it over to the police station. Yeah, that's what we would do early in the morning. You know, around um, like I said about four o'clock, I would get up and once we'll cook it, the breakfast and. We'll uh, pack everything up, you know, put them in um, lunch packs and just uh, take it over there, you know. And, I mean, it would be hot breakfast. It, it wasn't just, you know, something cold or it was it was a nice, warm, hot breakfast because once they get up at 6 o'clock in the morning to eat that breakfast, they have it to 7 in the morning to leave the, the police department. So they got all morning to figure out where they got to go, what they got to do, and it's cold out there. So I just feel like at least give them a warm meal in their stomachs to start their morning off, you know, to figure out you know, where they got to go. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And and what I find really, uh, I guess, strange and kind of ironic with uh, with situations like yours is that, uh, you know, these, these homeless people, sure, there are, you know, um, I guess food pantries and things like that where they can probably get some food, but... Uh, I imagine, uh, you know, those those organizations are always looking for for, for more help. Uh, so it's it's kind of ironic that um, I think if I understand it correctly, they just they wanted to inspect your cooking equipment and make sure the food was you know up to code before you uh, before you would give it to other people. So um, I mean, these these homeless people might not have you know had food for the entire day or maybe not for that day. Uh, so it's just kind of ironic that. Um, 
I don't know. They they it's it, it came down to that just their um, just their their licensing procedure, um, which uh, you know definitely not good. And uh, you know kind of at least for me it, it shows that uh, you know not everything the, not everything government does is you know to actually help people because you are helping people. And uh, they they said that uh, that, that you uh, you couldn't do that without uh, you know jumping through some hoops. The the most hurtful thing about the whole situation was the way they did it. You know, I mean they they came in here. You know, one, I was not home at the time. You know, my sister had just got off of work. She did a 12-hour shift. She called me. She said she was hungry. So I cooked my sister something to eat, and I took it over there to her. By the time I got back home, I, I, I picked up, uh, you know, uh, so someone that helps me out during the day. Um, by the time I got back home, there was a big old giant yellow box truck backed up to my, my home. And when I walked, I couldn't even walk up on the steps. There's sheriffs all over, and they they got bulletproof vests, like they were at a uh, you know a murder crime scene or something, you know. And I walk in here, you know, I go in the kitchen. They're taking food out of my refrigerator, and and I'm you know I'm telling them don't take my food, you know. And then basically I'm told I can't even be in my own kitchen, you know. Then it took all of my, they took everything. They took my my deep fryer, my they took crock pots. They didn't take nothing commercial. Everything that was commercial was in the back room, and they went in every room of this home. They even went behind my fireplace. I don't understand why they did that. They unplugged every plug in my home. I don't understand why they did that. You know, I just felt like they treated me like I was a big-time drug dealer or something, or this was a, a murder scene. So, I mean, that was the most hurtful thing about the whole situation, you know, because all that's the only thing I ever want to do is just be a help in this community. I've always... You know, uh, I've always did stop the, you know, violence, trying to do stop the violence marches or trying to, you know, bring people together, you know, because I really believe that a community that stands together, you know, we can, you know, cure all the, come, uh, come against all the crime that's taking place in the city. You know, that's the type of person I am, you know, and the way they, you know, made me out to be, you know, that, that hurted me more than anything, you know. Right, right, and and I mean, I, I'm I'm sure you've seen uh, the news and such. Uh, you know, there with when it comes to to some of these raids. I mean, they 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 put you and the people at your house in a potentially dangerous situation. Uh, you know, accidents happen. Um, so just to to think that this was all over. Uh, you know, not going to them to uh, you know get the the permits or whatever to give food to the homeless. Just uh, you know, there's there's really uh, no law minuscule enough where they won't uh, you know send uh, send their send their guys out. Uh, so I, I can certainly understand uh, that that would uh, you know that that would hurt you uh, uh, pretty badly. So uh, you mentioned that they uh, that they that they took your stuff. Um, so uh, that so you got it down to a hundred dollar fine um, plus court costs, and uh, they they took all that cooking equipment. I mean, uh, what's kind of the estimated dollar amount of that, and are you going to get that back? I don't know. They, when, once they took everything, they, they, you know, just handed me a piece of paper um, of everything they took, a list of everything. Um, I haven't heard anything else from it. Um, they, I don't know if I have to even go to court for this or anything, you know. The Cambrios that they took from me um, each, they were over $400. So that's $800, you know. And then on top of the deep fryers and the crock pots and my pizza ovens, so everything they took, um, 90% of that stuff I don't even use. So, like I said, I don't understand why they even took it, you know. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely unfortunate. You know, a lot of you know a lot of money for the equipment, and uh, you know most folks can't uh, you know just to afford to you know to re up on that and buy it again. So I'd be very curious. Uh, I'm sure there's some sort of stipulations, and I think it was the cottage food laws, what uh, the one that they said you violated. I'm sure there is a, a process uh, that they have to go through. So um, yeah, once I once we get done speaking, I'll go home tonight and actually you know look and see uh, if they if they hold it for 30 days, and then uh, you know they'll give it back to you after they complete their investigation. Uh, or if it's uh, or if it is you know confiscated for good, uh, but yeah, that's uh, certainly terrible. And again, all over, um, you know, just uh, um, you know, making food for the homeless. So, so, um, so you mentioned that you aren't quite sure what the what the next step is. I mean, if you had to, um, I mean, for for people here in Decatur, um, you know, you said you're known as Chef Sanders. You're you're, you're that uh, you're that cook. So, um, for 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 those that uh, you know local that may be listening, uh, what would you uh, you know ask them to do to uh, to help you, or or what would you uh, wish for them to do going forward? 
one, I just uh, just ask that you know, one to continue to pray for me. Um, this is my life, you know. I mean, when they did this, it it kind of attacked my livelihood. Um, you know, even far as um, how I'm going to um, pay my next bill, I don't know how I'm going to do that. But I just ask, um, you know, if there's someone out there that can to help me get into a um, a place to be able to continue to do what I love the most, not only cook and um, uh, cater and, um, you know, for myself, but also to be able to help uh, get young people off the streets to, you know, because a lot of these young people, they, they, they want jobs, you know, and it's hard for them to get a job because, you know, in this day and time, you know, people that's more experienced is getting, you know, the jobs first. So I want to teach these young people a trade. You know, maybe they may not do this when they get older, but it will be something that they can back on and say, okay, at least I learned how to do that. And I, I can, I know I can, uh, make a living off of being a chef, making, you know, uh, up to a hundred thousand dollars a year or whatever, you know, but, um, you know, also I want to get back to feeding the homeless, you know, that's, that's my heart right there is, is helping the homeless. You know, this is where I started from, you know, when I first started cooking, it was feeding the homeless, you know, and that's where I want to get back to. So I just ask if anybody out there that want to help in any kind of way, you know, if, if you can help, um, if you can help invest to get into a building or even um, maybe, you know, help me figure out how to get a, a loan or something or, or help me um, take the right steps, you know, to get everything I need to, you know, or just lead me in that right direction, you know. <laughs> Very good, very good. Yeah, and I, I don't have a, a large audience for for my podcast, uh, but I do have uh, yeah, I do know uh, have plenty of folks here in Decatur. So uh, yeah, for those listening that do live here, uh, I mean this is uh, this is what Chef Chef Tanner has been doing for uh, for quite some time uh, is helping people, and it's certainly unfortunate that uh, the local government uh, would come in and uh, and and do this to him. It's it's a really really sad story, and unfortunately, as I said in the beginning. Uh, it's uh, certainly not uncommon. It's actually uh, more common than it's not. So, uh, Chef Sanders, any uh, any other uh, closing thoughts? I just want to, um, once again, just thank you for uh, reaching out, you know, um, and just even listening to my story. You know, I don't know what it, what's going to happen after all everything that, that then took place with me as far as the, um, getting back to cooking here in, in the city of Decatur. Um, I do want to say that I just appreciate all the support and all the love and, and all the encouraging words I've been getting, you know, from all across the globe. Very good, very good. And, I'm, I, and uh, I, I've been wanting to get into local stories and such, so uh, I definitely appreciate you taking the time uh, to, uh, to, to talk with me. And uh, as I said, I'll look into uh, the Cottage Food Law and see, uh, see what, uh, what they kind of say there. And uh, I'll put a call out to my, uh, my audience. Uh, for those who uh, you know live in Decatur, share this far and wide. And for, for those who don't, uh, at least uh, you know, even if uh, the, the best, uh, the best possible solution doesn't uh, come into fruition where, you know, he gets all of his cooking equipment back and uh, and all of that. At least we can kind of make this a little bit of a nightmare for uh, the local government for, for what they've done to, uh, to Chef Sanders. So thank you so much again. I appreciate it.